Hello, my name is David Voiles and I'm a technical evangelist at Microsoft and today I want to discuss exactly what that role entails. I get this question all the time, whether it's from other developers I meet out in the field or people who are perhaps looking to transition from um, one role, even outside of technology, into technical evangelism. Now, the term itself, technical evangelism, was actually coined by Apple in the 1980s by a gentleman named Guy Kawasaki. Uh, he's a very charismatic individual, very technical, fantastic speaker, and has many, many good books on the subject. He's since gone on to become a venture capitalist, but at the time, he was there to highlight and promote what Apple was doing and to get developers to support their platform in the mid and late 1980s. Afterwards, a number of technical companies have uh, picked up on the role, including Google, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. So you may find us in the field all the time. So a technical evangelist has many, many hats to wear, but I want to go over some of them with you today. The first is the combination of tech and talks. Now this is very difficult to find someone who can manage both, right? You typically find someone who's very, very technical, but perhaps isn't the greatest in, greatest in front of an audience, and then also someone who uh, perhaps on the other side of the coin can speak very, very well in front of audiences, but may not have the best technical background. Well, in evangelism, we're here to combine those two, uh, which kind of creates the best of both worlds. So the idea is we train up very quickly on some new technology, get our skills nice and honed, and then we disseminate that information to a crowd, whether it's a local meetup group, a university, pitching content to other product groups. So if you like technology, and you like to talk, that is share content, either live or pre-recorded like this, then this role may be exactly what you're looking for. It's also selling without sales. So what that means is you don't really have any kind of quota that you're tied to in terms of, we've got to get X number of dollars of revenue um, under this year, otherwise you know, you're all canned. It doesn't quite work like that. Instead, it's more like soft sales, if anything. So, for example, I'm not tied to any kind of uh, sales quota. Instead, it's more of the idea of, I want to show people how awesome our technology can be. That means uh, I might incorporate um, a competitor's technology into what I'm doing to highlight exactly how they work together. It's not about trashing your opponent. It's more about showing how you can actually work together to create something awesome. The idea with technical evangelism isn't that you want a larger piece of the pie. Instead, it's that you want the entire pie to grow so that you all get a larger piece of it, and this way everybody benefits. So again, it's no, no um, hard sales you're ever having to do. Instead, it's more, um, I found this really cool technology that our company creates that I love to adopt, and now it's my role to go out and explain to you exactly why that's awesome, why I'm passionate about it, and why I want you to be using it as well. Travel. If you like to travel quite a bit, well, this is a great job for you as well. Um, so our travel is kind of back and forth. Um, some of us might travel 25, 30% of the time. Others might travel maybe only 10% of the time. For the most part, it's up to you and what you want to do. There may be a handful of uh, larger engagements throughout the year they have to go to. So for example, our team offsite changes to a different city or venue each year. And because most, if not all of us work remotely, that means our CI, uh, headquarters at Microsoft, obviously based out of Redmond, a uh, suburb immediately outside of Seattle, most of us do not work there. I live in Philadelphia. I work from my comfort of my home. And we have offices in just about every major city that we can stop in and out of at any point, uh, use meeting rooms, have workspace, whatever works. So um, on occasion, I might have to go to developer conferences, whether they're in different cities. Um, I might have to go to hackathons. Uh, I might have to go to student engagements. So for example, I'm based in Philadelphia. But I've already been up to Boston several times. Uh, I did a hackathon at Cornell University in upstate New York. Uh, so if you'd like to travel, well, this is a fantastic way to get it done uh, because it really starts to scratch that itch. But best of all, you're growing your network the entire time. You're building your brand. You're getting to meet developers face to face in front of other locations. I just got back from the Game Developer Conference in San Francisco and got to see some of my best friends from across the world for a week. Community and events. Here's a picture of Gavin, who's one of our great technical evangelists based out of Boston. And here he's at some sort of student hackathon. I actually found this picture on Meetup. Maybe it's the University of Albany. Um, as you see a gentleman with a U Albany sweater back there. So this is just part of the work that we do. So in this particular case, Gavin likely went to a student hackathon. He might sit there for two days, uh, managing a booth, answering technical questions, um, showing off samples that he's created, or um, helping students to get the most out of their hack. 
I absolutely love doing these. Done that at University of Pennsylvania, Drexel, Cornell. Again, we have teammates from across the country. There's about 70 of us total. So if you love to tinker, to hack, to create, well, this is a fantastic way to get it out. Best of all, you are always learning. For example, I wasn't very proficient at Python when I first started, but the more that I started going to these student hackathons, I realized, wow, students are starting off with Python in most of their classes. So whether they want to create a very simple script or have something like Python running on a web server to then spit out JavaScript and HTML, a web page, uh, I realized I had to ramp up very quickly. But I would have never thought about this or even considered learning Python for web content had I not gone to all these hackathons and really been in touch with what students are using. Blogging and videos. Here's a shameless, uh, shameless self-promotion of my own blog. Uh, this is a snapshot from today. So at the top here I have a best of, which are just uh, resources, links, articles that I found to be very, very useful in my own learning, but also uh, perhaps an FAQ that I put together where uh, I get a lot of the same questions over and over, and I thought it was important for me to answer many of those questions there. And that's exactly what this best of is. So whether you're looking to get into coding or blogging or how-tos, that is a great place to start. Also, I may copy information from our other blogs. For example, we're looking for uh, a coworker, a peer on the team that I'm on. I'm in Philadelphia, but my immediate team runs from Philly down to Miami. Atlanta is one of those cities, and we're looking for somebody to join our team. And that's exactly why I'll share this uh, LinkedIn or a blog post there to say, hey, if you're interested in what I'm doing and what our team is working on, you know, we'd love to have you on board. Uh, go down a little bit further, you can see I have updates to Xbox Live Creators Program. I was making video games before I joined Microsoft. And again, I, I get to stay with all of that. So I really get to follow my passions the entire time. On the side, right, it's all about building your brand. So I have my, uh, my current Twitter on there so you can see all of my tweets. Uh, if I'm streaming on Twitch, whether I'm playing a game or some kind of tutorial, you can see it right there on my website. So it's a huge part of this is um, blogging, doing podcasts, uh, making videos like what I'm doing right now. So we have lots of technical content. And again, it's our job to quickly learn it, share it with the community. Product groups. So here's a shot of uh, Xbox Live. This is probably E3 um, two years ago, I believe. But we get to work very, very closely with the product groups. So one key aspect of our role in the field as technical evangelist is the product groups, perhaps Xbox, may have something they want to get out to a larger audience, a big part of the developers across the country. So what they'll do is they'll give us information, say, hey, here is the latest and greatest. This is what we're trying to get developers to adopt. This is where uh, we think we can really have some key points. We'll learn this content and again, share it with the community, whether that's uh, meetup groups, user groups, blogs, or creating some of our own code, our own content and projects and showing them off. So the way that a lot of us like to look at our role is that we're essentially getting paid to tinker, to learn, uh, to keep growing, to building our personal brand at one of the greatest tech companies in the world. Diverse backgrounds. I say this because we have people of all different shapes, sizes, colors, mindsets, uh, and backgrounds. So for example, I was a construction worker before I came to Microsoft. Other people were students, came straight from university. We have several people on our team who've worked in IT or worked as programmers for decades and then came into evangelism. So it is all over the place, a broad spectrum of people. And that's what one of the aspects I really get to enjoy about this role is I get to see um, what it's like for someone to come from a large company like um, Lockheed Martin or someone else to come from a different aerospace contractor while at the same time I'm sitting next to another coworker who just came straight from university. So we all have these different viewpoints and aspects that we're kind of coming from and uh, it really allows us to share our knowledge but also to ramp up very, very quickly. Change. Change is a huge part of evangelism. Your goals from one year may be drastically different the next. So if you're not comfortable with change, this may not be the best role for you. But if you do like to change, if you like to learn, to quickly adopt new technologies, this is a fantastic job. One year, you might be encouraged to uh, really get developers on board with Windows as a whole. The next, it might be about our cloud platform, Azure. Uh, following that, it might be something with um, Xbox, Xbox Live, HoloLens is a big push for us right now. So if you like working with the latest and greatest technology at uh, a company like Microsoft, well, this is a great role because you get to tinker with all of these items. Um, and it's constantly changing. So very seldom are you bored as you're uh, constantly learning new tech. Again, just this year alone, I've had to learn uh, bots, Azure Framework, uh, um, Azure Functions, uh, Lewis, um, and that's just in the last couple of weeks. We did a workshop with NVIDIA down in Atlanta. I've had to quickly ramp up on CUDA. 
so it's C++ and C for um, machine learning using graphics cards and we'll continue to do workshops across the country. So it's all about change, quickly learning new skills. That's one of the things I love about this. I've been in this role for a bit more than three years now and uh, it just continues to get better by the year. So in conclusion, a technical evangelist is technical, talkative, and most importantly, engaging, right? You want to be authentic the entire time. As an evangelist, um, your credibility largely relies on how the public perceives you. So if you're not comfortable with sharing something, you don't have to, right? It's a large part of becoming an evangelist is bringing on your brand. So for example, if your background was um, perhaps game development and web development, well, you can continue to focus on those areas. Just figure out creative ways to tie in what our current uh, initiative is around. So for example, I mentioned the cloud before, Azure, a massive platform. I love game development, I love web development. There are a hundred different ways that I could tie those two together. Whether it's um, creating games in Unity and using something like Azure to create a leaderboard uh, or having offline sync. There's all kinds of ways you can get creative with what you're doing. So we're looking for the people who can find the best of these two worlds. They're very technical. It doesn't matter which um, languages you're proficient with. We've had people come on board who know, uh, who are very well versed in something like iOS. Uh, so they know Objective-C, they know Swift. Other people might be very proficient with Android and Java. Um, we bring people on from, from all brands, all sizes, doesn't matter. Because if you can demonstrate that you can learn something very well, very deep and very quickly, well then it's very easy to keep learning new technologies from there. So don't let your choice of um, language or tools that you use kind of uh, limit what you're, you're doing. Um, we're open to using all kinds of technology. I have a MacBook Pro, I use an iPhone. At the same time I'm using Windows and programming for Xbox. Uh, Tinker with PlayStation. So a uh, large part of this is just being very technical, um, learning quickly, and then being talkative and engaging with your community. Uh, in the show notes here, just below, I've shared a list of um, our, our Twitter list I put together for evangelists across the country. There's about 65 of us total, but you can find most of us on this list. Feel free to reach out, say hello, ask some questions. I'll be more than glad to help. Again, my name is David Voiles. You can find me on my website, DaveVoyles.com. My Twitter handle is exactly the same. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions. 